Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Family Intervention Strategies class. My name is Glenn Killian, and I am the instructor for this class. I know that many of you have had me before for other online classes, but we have a few folks who are brand new to me. And either way, I just want to say welcome to you. I'm so uh, grateful that you've taken and signed up to take this great class that we're teaching here at the end of this uh, semester, a little eight-week class. And uh, this is a great class to take. It's a, it's a required class in many of our degrees in the Human Services Program. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time here on the very, very front end, making sure that I just share with you some basic orientation information. This video is not that long, so just make sure you watch it all the way through to make sure that we get off on the right step here in our class. So again, my name is Glenn Killian. I'm one of the full two full-time instructors in the Human Services Program at Montgomery. And I've been teaching now here at full-time at Montgomery for almost 20 years. And if you've been in several classes with me, students oftentimes give me a hard time because usually whenever we kick a class off, I always say, this is one of my favorite classes to teach. Well, that's definitely true for this class. I mean it also too when I say it in other classes as well. But the family intervention class is a class that I always enjoy teaching for all kinds of different reasons. Um, one of the reasons is really, and this is probably true for a lot of people, many of us are interested in families and uh, we're interested in family dynamics and the interesting relationships and all the different layers that are at play often in our families. And that's kind of what we're going to get into a little bit in this class, basically. Sometimes, you know, you may take, a, for example, maybe a substance abuse counseling class, and maybe we talk about concepts in some of those addictions counseling classes, and maybe they don't really relate directly to you. Maybe you've never struggled with addiction or drug and alcohol problems, or maybe you've never known someone close to you who has. And so sometimes in those classes, you know, people, we talk about concepts and they kind of don't really relate directly to us. Other times, maybe like in the abnormal behavior class, where we talk about all those different mental health conditions. You know, we talk about certain mental health kind of struggles that people can have. And, you know, maybe not all of them we can connect with directly because maybe you know, maybe we've never known someone who's ever struggled with obsessive compulsive disorder. Maybe we've never known or been around anyone with schizophrenia or something like that. And so we learn about the concepts kind of from more of an academic kind of a perspective because they don't really relate to us. Well, the family class, the class that you're enrolled in that we're getting ready to start is unlike any other class, probably in some ways that we offer in our program, because it's a class that everybody can connect to because every single one of us is a part of a family. There's not one person in the class who can say, well, not me, I'm not a part of a family. All of us were born into our families of origin. All of us are a part of a current family right now. So this is one of those classes that there's not anyone who ever takes this class who cannot say, hey, this doesn't apply or relate to me. And so it's one of the reasons why I like teaching this class, it's one of many reasons, is, is for that reason right there alone. So this is a class that kind of as its name implies, we're really going to talk about family counseling, working with families who are struggling, and we're going to kind of look at two or three really important counseling approaches, uh, theories, counseling theories that are unique to uh, family counseling. We're going to do a little bit of history. We're going to talk a little, a little bit about some modern trends that we see in families, all of that. So that's kind of what you've gotten yourself into. Really quickly, first thing, if you've not done this yet, I need you to go find the syllabus for the class. If you want to print out a hard copy, that would be great. But at a minimum, you need to make sure you're reviewing the syllabus for our class. As always, as is the case in any class, the syllabus is our guide. And I want you to go through and review it. And as you review the syllabus, I just want you to make sure you're aware of how the class is set up and structured. I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. Make sure that you're aware of the deadlines. You're aware of the textbook that's required. All of that is in the syllabus. So make sure that you're looking and getting the syllabus and reviewing all of that. And let me just kind of summarize some key factors about the syllabus. So number one, the first thing that you have to do in this class is an opening discussion question or posting. So uh, most of the modules, which we'll talk about here in a second, open on Mondays. And we're starting this class on a Wednesday. So we're starting kind of the middle of the week. So what I do usually when we do that is you have a, a an opening discussion question that's due at the end of the weekend that I want you just to go in really, really simple. If you've taken online classes before, you're probably very familiar with discussion postings. And I just want you to keep it simple. I want you to go, I want you to navigate and find that on the table of contents, the opening week discussion question. I want you to share a little bit about a little bit a little bit with us about who you are. And I want you to also to, to give us, so give me and give us a little bit of information about your own family and your observation and experiences in your own family, just very, very briefly. 
Um, you do not have to, with that discussion question, respond to anyone else's posting. You can just respond to mine. So make sure that you're kind of aware of that. So that's the first thing you've got to do. That's a do at the end of the weekend. Uh, that posting, if you want full credit, you need to have it posted by the end of the weekend. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Then starting on Monday, and, and, and with each consecutive Monday, you'll see if you look in the syllabus that we have five modules. And the five modules are going to be open from Monday to Monday. And so we're just going to do module one all the way through module five. Module one, which opens on Monday, is kind of an introduction overview kind of a module. And then module two, three, and four uh, are where we talk about specific family counseling approaches, family systems theory in module number two, multi-generational or transgenerational family counseling in module number three, and then structural family counseling in module number four. And those are three foundational family counseling approaches that today we draw from all the time, even when we're not working with families. I, as, as, a, as someone whose background is in counseling, um, I've worked many, many years through the years working one-on-one -on -one or in groups with folks. And one of the things that happens is we'll talk about in module one, we're always doing family work. Very often when you work with one-on-one -on -one individual people or you're, you're leading a group, we're often talking about family issues or we're talking about family history or we're talking about family relationships. Even when we're working one-on-one -on -one with people, we're always doing family work. So having a good base and kind of a good foundation, a little bit of a knowledge as you're we're going into the human services field of basically just some different ways in which we can approach and do work with families. That's kind of what this class is really all about, is making sure you get you have a little bit of an overview of those three foundational family systems theory, multi-generational family counseling, structural family counseling, those foundational family counseling approaches that are also reviewed in your textbook. So let me also talk about the textbook then. One of the things you also are going to need is you're going to need the textbook, which I have listed for you in the orientation information, as well as also in the syllabus. An introduction to family counseling is what it's called. It's a purple book. And so you're going to need that as you work through the modules. Let's talk a little bit more about the modules if I can. So you're going to need the textbook. So, excuse me, if you haven't gotten that, you need to go ahead and get the textbook. And with each module, here's what you're, here's what, here's what you're going to see when the, when the module oh, first module opens on Monday. There's going to be a set of written lecture notes that if you want to print out and put in your notebook, you can. Occasionally when students take online classes with me, they often ask if they can have some written notes to sort of take with them. Because once the classroom ends at the close of the semester, you know that the classroom ends and everything in the classroom disappears from you. So anything you want to keep with you and take with you, you need to have to print it out. Occasionally students will want something to take with them. So with every single module, I post for you a Word document. That's usually four or five, maybe even six pages in some of the modules of some written lecture notes. I also post for you in every single module a video just like this one, maybe sometimes two or three videos just like this one. Little 20, 30 minute little mini lecture videos that go with the lecture notes and in those in those lectures you'll see i'll share my powerpoint slides with you and i'll talk over them just as if we were sitting in the classroom here on the montgomery campus some of you are very familiar with that with me where we sit in class and we talk and we share and you take some notes for your notebook off the powerpoint slides we're going to do that through video in this class so with each module you have uh, the, you have the lecture notes that you can print out and review you have my video and the PowerPoint, which go together with the lecture notes. And then there's two things you're going to do with every single module. So there's five modules. So you're going to do five homework assignments and five quizzes. So in each module, there's a, a written homework assignment, 10 to 15 questions that come from the lecture notes and from the lecture video and also from the textbook. That's when and where you need the textbook is I ask you questions on every single homework assignment from the textbook. And then you're going to do a quiz, an open note, open book quiz at the end of every module as well, too. So with every module, there's five of them. You're going to do written homework assignment. You're going to do a little quiz. So there's five homework assignments and there are five little quizzes that you're going to do. So here's the thing I want to say to you. And again, this sometimes catches people off guard uh, because this is an eight week class. We're covering in eight weeks what I normally cover in 16. So we're going to move fairly quickly. And so I want you to think about this class like a summer school class. If you've ever taken a summer school class, you know that one of the great things about taking a summer school class is you can kind of get you can get a class done very quickly in about six weeks or so. But the drawback of that is summer classes go fast and we move quickly. And so with every single week, you're going to have a different module. So you've got a homework assignment to work on every single week. You've got a quiz to do basically every single week that starts on Monday. So it's really important in these in these condensed classes 
that you are organized, that you're getting organized right now and you are ready to go. I want to highlight a couple of things, uh, especially on the quizzes. Um, I do not allow makeups of missed quizzes. So the quizzes, you look in the syllabus, you'll see the dates and the times when the quizzes are open. If you want any points at all for any of the five quizzes, you have to take the quizzes while they're open. I don't open, I don't open quizzes once they close. So be, be organized there. Also, too, on the homework assignments, I do let you turn in late homework assignments if you miss a deadline, but I take points off for every single one. So if you really want to get a good grade in this class, you need to make sure you're doing the quizzes while they're open and you're turning that homework and those homework and assignments in on time every single week. Also, if you look in the syllabus, you'll see there's two additional written assignments that I've kind of spaced out through the course of this semester. There's what's called a genogram assignment, which we're going to do in the middle of module number three when we're talking about multi-generational family counseling. And then at the end of the semester, at the very, very end, the last thing you'll turn in, potentially, the last thing that's due on the calendar, is a reflection paper uh, where I, I give you an outline where and that, 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 is all, that, that assignment is already posted. You can begin working on that if you want to. An outline where I want you to talk and think a little bit about your own family experience. And so I've got that outline posted. You're going to write that paper as well, too. So in addition to the five homework assignments and the five quizzes, you have another written assignment due about halfway through our time done called the genogram assignment. And at the very, very end, you have the family reflection paper. So all of that kind of is how the class is basically kind of set up and organized. So for this first several days, all you've got to work, worry about is reviewing the syllabus, making sure you have your textbook or you at least get it ordered, and do the discussion question posting. That won't take you, the discussion question posting won't take you very long at all. Get that done. Then on Monday, Monday morning about 8 o'clock, module number one is going to open. And you've got all the way until the end of the week on Sunday to go through and review the lecture videos, look at the lecture notes, look at any handouts I've posted for you, do the homework assignment, do the quiz. You turn right around the next Monday, module number two is going to open. So that's kind of the way we have the classroom set up. This is a class also, too, in case you haven't picked this up yet, this is a class where you can work at your own pace, so to speak. In other words, uh, this is not a class where you have to log in at certain specific times. The classroom is open 24-7 for you, and as long as you're abiding by those deadlines and the assignments, you can come in and work at your leisure, at your pace, as long as you're abiding by those deadlines. So that's kind of how the class is organized and set up. I hope that you're looking forward to a great semester. We are going to move quickly, but it, but that's okay. As long as you stay organized and keep up, you're going to do just fine. My contact information is located on the first page of the syllabus. You can email me in D2L. You can send me an email to my Lone Star email. You can call me on the phone if you have questions, issues, or whatever it may be. But it's going to be a great semester. It's going to be a great class. Again, I'm glad that you're on board, and I will talk to you when we get into module number one. See you then.